In this video, I'm revealing seven top wines that I'm buying in 2024. There's red, white, and sparkling represented, and a variety of price points, so there should be something for everyone. But I'm not messing around today, so let's get started. We're going to start off strong with a double 100 pointer. The 2020 Smith O' Lafitte is a wine that received 100 points from both Robert Parker and Jeb Dunnock. Located in Pesach Leonion, Smith O' Lafitte a few years ago made the decision to use a much more strict selection process for its top wine. So now only about one third of the fruit, that is the highest quality fruit, makes it into this top wine. That's one of the reasons why their wines have been so impressive and performed so well in the last few years. The 2020 vintage is around two thirds Cabernet Sauvignon, one third Merlot, but there's also small amounts of Cabernet Franc and Petit Verdot in it. This is a wine that will definitely benefit from seven to eight years of additional bottle age, and it should cruise in your cellar for decades. Indeed, I've been enjoying my 2000 Smith O' Lafitte recently, and it's still showing extremely well. If you're interested in visiting the Bordeaux region, this is definitely an interesting producer to visit as well. They have a hotel that's conveniently located right next door, and their wine cellar looks like it's something straight out of a James Bond movie. In terms of price, this wine sells for around $160, which is certainly not inexpensive, but it's definitely not bad for a double 100 point wine either. Clos de Pop has a long and storied history. It's aptly named because one of its parcels of vines is located near the Pope's castle and surrounded by walls. Clos de Pop has around 40 hectares of vines in all that are spread out among 30 different parcels. These parcels are situated on a variety of clay and limestone soils, which helps to add depth and complexity to the wines. In addition, Clos de Pop is a big fan of restricting yields in the vineyards. Indeed, their yields are only about one-third to one-half of what is permitted in Chateauneuf-du-Pape. For that reason, it's a consistently excellent producer and a wine that I consider buying every single vintage, although the 2020 vintage is particularly compelling and highly acclaimed. The 2020 vintage is a blend that consists of around 55% Grenache, 35% Merved, and the remaining 10% consists of Syrah and other permitted grapes. This is definitely less Grenache and more Merved than Clos de Pop typically includes in its blend. So if you're someone who's not a huge fan of Grenache or who enjoys Merved, you definitely want to give this one a try. Better still, I found this one selling for an extremely reasonable $89 online. So definitely shop around. That's an extraordinarily fair price for a wine of this high quality. After a couple of full-bodied reds, you may be in need of a palate cleanser, so how about some champagne? The 2012 Laurent Perrier Brut is a highly acclaimed wine that sells for a fairly reasonable $93 per bottle. 2012 is a stellar vintage in champagne, and Laurent Perrier is a producer that I've really come to enjoy, particularly over the past year. One of the things I appreciate most is the fact that it has a house style that emphasizes freshness and elegance. Despite the fact that the 2012 vintage represents the 200th anniversary for Laurent Perrier, this is only about the 30th bottling of a vintage champagne for Laurent Perrier. The 2012 Laurent Perrier Brut Champagne is a blend that consists of 50% Chardonnay and 50% Pinot Noir. The most prestigious champagne for Laurent Perrier is the Grand Siècle. The Grand Siècle is also impressive and one that I enjoy, but that one will set you back about two and a half times the price of this bottle. So if you're interested in a high quality, reasonably priced vintage champagne from the outstanding 2012 vintage, this is definitely one that you want to consider. 2021 was a very strong vintage for California's Central Coast. In fact, if you paid attention to the top 100 list that came out for 2023, you'll find that the 2021 Central Coast vintage is well represented on many of those lists, particularly at the very top. One of the Central Coast wines that I've recommended a few times on this channel is the Diatom Chardonnay, which is from Santa Barbara County and made by a winemaker named Greg Brewer. That's a highly acclaimed Chardonnay that sells for a very reasonable $20 to $25, and many viewers who have purchased that wine have commented about how much they enjoyed it. But Greg Brewer is also the winemaker for a winery called Brewer Clifton, and he makes a Chardonnay that's called 3D. The 2021 Brewer Clifton 3D Chardonnay is from Santa Rita Hills. It received an astonishing 99-point score from Jeb Dunnock, yet sells for a very reasonable $59 per bottle. This is a full-bodied Chardonnay that has descriptors that include citrus and stone fruit, 
whetstone, and also ample acidity. So if you enjoy the Diatom Chardonnay and you're looking to splurge a little bit on a higher priced wine, you definitely want to give this one a try, particularly with California Chardonnay like Aubert selling for more than $100 per bottle now. If you're interested in wine recommendations, wine collecting strategies, and learning more about wine, please do subscribe to my channel. I've been collecting wine for more than 15 years and also have a level four diploma from the WSET. So I have both formal certification as well as substantial practical knowledge from the School of Hard Knocks. Next up is a wine that receives scores ranging from 94 points to 96 points, yet sells for a very reasonable $50 or so per bottle. This is a wine from Australia, and it's the 2021 Torbrecht the Struy. This is a full-bodied wine that's 100% Shiraz, which is also Syrah. While this wine is 100% Shiraz, they add some complexity to it by blending Shiraz that comes from two different locations. A little more than half of the fruit comes from the Barossa Valley, and the remainder comes from the Eden Valley. This wine matures for around 18 months in only 20% new French oak. This is a wine that has a blue and black fruit profile with descriptors that include dark chocolate, minerality, and mixed spice. There's also a texture I appreciate, as well as polished silky tannins. This is a wine that you can enjoy immediately with a healthy decant and some red meat, but it should cruise in your cellar for up to a decade as well. This is definitely a compelling value at this price point. As viewers of this channel know, I'm a strong believer in loading up on wine from strong vintages. And for 2024, there's very few vintages that are stronger than the 2019 vintage for Brunello di Montalcino. Indeed, 2019 is considered to be a five-star vintage for Brunello. The weather was practically perfect for producing high-quality Sangiovese. As a result, lots of the wines are characterized by elegance, precision, and finesse and are extraordinarily well-balanced. About six weeks ago, I attended a Brunello tasting, during which about 70 of these upcoming pre-release wines were offered. I tasted through almost all of them, and they were extremely impressive across the board. In fact, there were only about 10% of the wines that I did not like and would not consider purchasing, but that was primarily due to stylistic reasons and not because they were bad quality wines. So in my view, the floor for Brunello di Montalcino for 2019 is quite high. So if there's a producer that you've enjoyed in the past, you can buy with confidence knowing that it's pretty likely that that producer also made a strong wine in the 2019 vintage. But in this video, I'm going to be identifying two of my favorite 2019 Brunello di Montalcinos, and these are both Brunellas that I tasted at the recent tasting and confirmed that they're of outstanding quality for this particular vintage the first of which is the Legerla Brunello di Montalcino. Legerla is a high quality, traditional, but small producer of Brunello di Montalcino that was founded back in 1975 when they purchased a 6.5 hectare parcel of vineyards from Biondi Santi that were part of the original Biondi Santi estate. They now have around 11.5 hectares of vines spread out over two parcels, and their Brunello di Montalcino is a mix of fruit from both the original Biondi Santi parcel as well as their other parcel. The 2019 Legerla Brunello di Montalcino is a classic Brunello that matured for a long period of time in large Slavonian oak casks. This is an elegant, refined expression of Sangiovese. Descriptors included mixed berry, mixed spice, violets, and there was ample acidity and a long lingering finish. Really an impressive wine, despite the fact that it wasn't even released yet. Il Poggione was one of the original three producers of Brunello di Montalcino, and it's now run by the fifth generation of its founder. The 2019 Il Poggione was definitely another one of the standouts at the recent Brunello tasting. Fans of Il Poggione will definitely want to make sure to get the 2019 Il Poggione in their cellar. This was an extremely impressive wine that was intensely concentrated, but yet had abundant structure and so it's definitely going to be one that you're going to want to give some additional bottle age to before you start enjoying it. The Il Poggione Brunello di Montalcino comes from vines that average more than 20 years old, as the younger vines are used for the Rosso di Montalcino. If you're interested in learning more about 2019 Brunello di Montalcino, or my thoughts regarding the numerous other wines that I tasted at the recent pre-release tasting, be sure to check out the video that's linked in the description below.